station. This is Houston. Officially, are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. We're ready. Voice of America, this is Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Voice of America. How do you hear me? Voice of America, this is the International Space Station. We hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard. Thanks very much. I take it this is Wheels that I'm on with right now? This is Wheels. Yes, Doug Wheelock aboard the space station. Welcome. Great. Thank you very much. Well, thank you all for your time this morning. And actually, my first question is for Scott. Um, when I spoke to your fellow astronauts uh, a few weeks ago, they said it takes about three to four weeks for your body to adjust to life on the station. And I was wondering, how are you adjusting and how are you reacting? You know, I think I've been up here, uh, I think it might be three weeks today, actually, and uh, I feel uh, really good. I think uh, I started feeling good about uh, about a week ago, where I felt like maybe I wouldn't feel any differently two or three or four weeks from now, but uh, I would imagine I'll still continue to improve a little bit, but so far, so good. What are some of the oddities that you feel up there on the space station? You mean besides my fellow crew members? <laughs> yes, besides your fellow crew members. Well, you know, uh, my first two previous flights were on uh, a space shuttle, and they were short duration flights. And one thing I noticed there was that if I turned upside down inside the space shuttle, for instance, it would take some time, maybe like five minutes before my reference frame shifted to where now the the ceiling was the floor and and vice versa but you know after being up here for a few weeks now it's interesting to note that if i you know flip 180 degrees around i can notice the instant where that reference frame changes and all of a sudden you know i feel like you know the the ceiling is the floor or vice versa so it's interesting to see the difference from being up here for uh you know, uh, more time than just a normal shuttle flight. And speaking of shuttles, you guys have the Discovery heading up to you, um, coming up on, sorry, blasting off on Monday. And I know it's bringing with it the final, sorry, the final U.S. component of the space station. How do you guys feel about the fact that the space station, or at least the U.S. portion of it, is about to be completed? Hi, this is Shannon. I think we're all very excited about the completion of the U.S. side of the space station. Um, it's, it's essentially completed now in terms of laboratory space, and so with the, the final closet being put on, we'll have uh, a, a better way to organize all the cargo we have up here and really be able to get down to the business of doing science, which is what the space station is all about. And actually, Discovery is bringing one other piece, Robonaut 2. And I was wondering what your thoughts are about interacting with the first humanoid robot that's going to be in space. Well, we're going to wait and see if how he how he blends in and see if he's a good neighbor with us. But uh, we're looking forward to uh, to working with our engineers on the ground uh, that have developed this uh, robonaut and uh, and just to see what its capacity is and how it can uh, assist us on board. And uh, so we're we're excited to uh, to welcome our new crew member aboard. And I. I know that some of you tweet, and I was wondering um, if any of you follow the tweets of Robonaut 2. Hey, this is Astro Wheels on, on Twitter. Um, I, I have not been able to do that, uh, just a matter of, matter of time, really. And uh, I, I understand that he's been tweeting. Uh, it's been tweeting. And, um, and, uh, but I haven't had a chance to look at those. And what are your thoughts, um, with it being Discovery's last mission, what are your thoughts about uh, the future of NASA and the future of spaceflight and that with NASA? Well, it is it is sad in a way to see the shuttle, uh, um, uh, us moving out of the shuttle era and uh, saying goodbye to Discovery for the last time. And uh, it is a little sad, but uh, change is not always a bad thing for us. Uh, uh, 
moving on as an agency, of course, uh, now the uh, the space station will take uh, center stage pretty much as our as our uh, orbiting laboratory, and it'll will have it in full utilization, bringing back the science uh, uh, to Earth that we originally planned for for the space station, and we'll look forward to. Uh, to a future vehicle that will take us a little bit further into space and help us discover more things. And uh, I think we've got a very, very exciting future for our kids that lay ahead uh, for us. And, um, and it's going to be exciting to see uh, where we go next. Anyone else want to take that question, too? Well, uh, certainly I agree with uh, uh, Wheels here on, uh, you know, we're, we're a little bit uh, sad uh, as we uh, look towards the end of the space shuttle program. And But, you know, I think we need to ref reflect back on its successes. It's been an amazing uh, vehicle. Um, very, very, uh, you know, sophisticated, do, can do a bunch of different missions, but, you know, we want to move away from low Earth orbit, and, and the shuttle, it's impossible to do that with the space shuttle. So in today's, uh, you know, fiscal environment, if we if we decide to do, uh, you know, to start a new program, unfortunately, we have to retire uh, another one. So uh, a little bit sad, but uh, it's very understandable. And Shannon? I'm not sure I have much to add to uh, what Wilson Scott have already said. It, it is, it is of course sad, but I also understand the necessity of um, ending the shuttle program so we can go do other things. And and I think we do need to do those other things. I think we need to do them for humankind. And I look forward to being a part of it. And Shannon, what uh, I know right now that you're acting as a human test subject among conducting other research. Is there a particular project you're most excited about that you're working on right now? I actually like some of the um, nutrition studies that we're doing. We've known for a long time how uh, being in space for long duration affects your muscle mass and your bone density. And um, there's been a lot more research on the ground that looks at uh, tweaking people's nutrition that can actually have a positive or negative effect on a person's bone density. And so being part of those, some of those studies, I think, is, is very interesting to me because it's perhaps a simple solution to some of the problems we have um, with osteoporosis and other, other um, issues facing us on the ground. Well, great. Thank you all so much for your time today and for all your efforts up there, and uh, good luck to you with the rest of your mission. Well, Voice of America, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's great to spend time with you, and uh, have a great rest of the week. You too. You too. The station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.